Assuming you aren't fussy about boxes and instruction manuals, Famicom cartridges can be had for very cheap. So much so that part of the fun is buying on a whim simply because one catches your eye. That was certainly the case here, with that striking red colored shell and the, the cool anime art. Uh, I, I knew I had to have this even without knowing exactly what it was. Um, it, the label art did have a certain familiarity to it though, and a quick Google search confirmed that this was indeed a Tsukiban Deka game. Now, to explain what Suki Bandaka actually is, it might be worth going back to how I even heard about it in the first place myself. Um, I suspect if you're a certain age, your introduction to the world of Japanese animation was through Robotech. Um, it wasn't specifically the first, but it certainly was probably at that time the best. I mean, it was genuinely fantastic, and it really captured the full extent of my imagination at the time. Keep in mind, though, that the anime boom of the of the 90s was at least a full decade away. In a, in a pre-internet era, it was very difficult to see or discover anything else that was going on over there. Uh, at least not unless you were part of some college anime club or part of the import scene or something. I, I definitely was not. Uh, but by pure happenstance, I, I randomly came across this strange graphic novel at a local comic shop. Um, Flipping through it, I was surprised to find this very specific reference to the SDF-1 command bridge in the middle of the book. Uh, as I discovered, the entire comic is filled with these little Easter eggs and satirical nods to various Japanese comics and other bits of pop culture. Um, as the author Ben Dunn explained, uh, Ichiku, one of the three main characters of the story, is very directly inspired by something called Tsukibandaka. Uh, now, Tsukibandaka, which roughly translates to delinquent schoolgirl cop, uh, began as a serialized manga, and then in the mid-80s was adapted into a live-action TV and film. The premise is that in order to avoid going to prison, a uh, tough criminal girl agrees to be recruited into the special police task force in order to confront terrorists and ninjas secretly operating of various high schools for some reason, uh, while wielding a steel weaponized yo-yo, as was the style at the time, I suppose. Um, the Tsukiban Deka 3 of the Famicom game very specifically refers to the third season of the show, which changes focus to the three sisters who are recruited into the same program. Um, as a Japanese pop culture form now, it did fizzle out fairly quickly, but its legacy can still be felt in modern series like uh, Kill a Kill, uh, though Tsukiban Deka had the benefit of existing in a time before anyone had heard the term fan service. Um, I have to admit, I've traditionally had a weakness for these style of anime games. Uh, when I got my TurboGrafx CD attachment in 92, the first thing I got was uh, Valis 2, this very anime game. And then uh, you could also play in imports uh, of, like, I got Macross 2036 and uh, Space Adventure Cobra 2, which were literal anime games. And it was sort of a foregone conclusion on seeing this cartridge, I was going to get it. Um, and while it does look quite lovely, to, uh, the game itself is far less pretty. Uh, the term one often finds applied to these kind of games is kasuge, which pretty much literally translates to crap game. Uh, as you would expect, low budgets and poor programming are defining characteristics of these crap games, but there's something else, something additional, something unique to the Famicom bubble era that applies as well. Um, the desire to sell strategy guides. These kind of games very often deliberately included secrets and strange progression mechanics that made it difficult, if not impossible, to complete these games without the kind of information these guides provided. Uh, Thingo does a way for game publishers to squeeze extra money from consumers before there was such a thing as DLC or microtransactions. Uh, but don't let me bias your judgment. Let's get to the game itself and see how good or bad it actually is. All right, here we are. I have to admit, the uh, screen artwork is not quite as nice as the uh, label art, but that's 8-bit for you. So this is where you get to pick your characters. Uh, the oldest sister is at the top, and then the main character is at the bottom, the youngest. I guess that's why she's at the bottom is the youngest. Uh, Yuka, Yu, uh, Yuka, Yuma, and Yui. So we'll start with Yui. Now this here... You might think oh, this is like some kind of preamble, a little bit of story thing at the start. No, no, no. This is the password. Remember how like Metroid's got like the two lines? And I don't know how many characters, like 20 characters, something like that. Now this is a 73 character password using pretty much the entire Japanese phonetic alphabet. So <laughs> good luck with that. We're just gonna play. 
So my, to start off with, I'm going to try and get my characters up to level 5 each. And I'll explain why in just a little bit here. Although part of it obviously is just to get my hit points up. You see the, the number at the top left shows my current hit points. And uh, we just, uh, this is pretty safe right here. Just an endlessly spawning waves of ninjas. Because, you know. Yeah, so this isn't just like an action game. This is like an action RPG kind of thing going on here. And in a minute, I'll bounce into the menu. I think I should do it. Okay, so every time you push the start button, it gives you a character selection every time. It shows you the password every time. And then you get to the your character sheet. So you see level five is what I want because that gives me the first ninja art. So, okay, so oh, how do I explain this? Okay, so you got hit points, right? Ninja points is like spell power, whatever. Experience, attack points, defense points. And then below that, you got your items. And right now she's got the phone card. Then over here is your ninja arts. And that's like a sleep spell kind of thing. It makes the enemy stop for a while. And there's your weapon. That's her yo-yo. Um, so we're going to go back to the oldest dot, oldest sister, and get her up to level five now. And she shoots metal origami cranes. Although the graphic looks more like a little ship, but uh, whatever. I'll just do this for a little bit. No, it's not the most exciting start, but this will make life a lot easier later on. My main goal is just to get to level 2, part of level 2. Because that was just my main goal when I first got this game originally anyway. And it took a lot of practice and uh, referencing to an FAQ just to get that far. This game is so obscure and not great. Okay, that might do it. Let's see. Level 5. Okay, so we can switch over to the middle sister. And I'll get her to level 5. Then we can actually start going. Oh yeah, by the way, you see that thing on the left? It looks like a little ring of flowers and a fountain in the middle. That fountain is deadly. You go into the fountain and you die. Because, you know, that's how city park fountains work, obviously. It's true to life. And just as true to life, all the streets are completely barren of cars. Level 4. I think Mayor de Blasio... Uh, dictated that should be no more cars in uh, downtown Tokyo. And so, unintended consequences, and get rid of the cars, the place gets overrun with ninjas. Alright, let's go. Let's do this thing. My first goal is to get uh, the chainmail armor, which is just a little bit east of here. Or a lot east of here, actually. Ugh. Stop hitting me with the ninja stars. So this area is really big. There's two different, basically two different kinds of gameplay in this. You got these free roaming areas and side-scrolling areas. Um, and these free roaming areas are not fun because all the streets and buildings look the same, basically. <laughs> so. There we are, okay. So not every character can wear this. I'm gonna give it to the oldest sister. Yes, don't hit me. Okay, got it. So that's it right there. Is that's the chainmail. See my defense went up a bit. And uh and there's the first phone booth. So we switch to the uh, main character. And that's the phone card. Use the phone card. Get our information from our boss, the guy with the sunglasses, don't know his name. I'm sure it's all very important information, I'm sure. Whatever. Alright, next phone booth is, uh... Or I can't go in that fountain or it's death. Oh, I love getting stuck on stuff, that happens a lot. Because the hitboxes in this game are so good. Okay, second phone booth. No, it didn't work. Gotta swipe the card multiple times sometimes. There we go. Yep, that's all vital information, I'm sure. Everyone got that? 
Okay, let's go to the third one. Yep. If I'm not saying much right now, what is there to say? <laughs> Imagine being the poor person who bought this game on release in 1986 for full price, 60 bucks, whatever. Well, they changed color. I guess we're in a different district now. The ninjas changed color. That's how you know. Okay, there's the parking lot. Now this will be fun because most of the time the hitboxes on the phone booth don't work. Okay, wow, I got lucky. Okay. No, nope, but the phone card didn't work. There we go. So I can get about 250. Yeah, the 256th board of Pac-Man is pretty wild. You're right. You're right there. That's a pretty strange uh, Pac-Man board. All right, let's go. Now we're going to um, going to walk on some flowers to get to the next phone booth, if I remember correctly. There we are. We're getting through this. No, the phone card didn't work again. There we go. Yep. Very important information, I'm sure. Uh, now we need the knee pads. Not for what you're thinking of. Okay, that's just... Okay, there's the knee pads. Give it to the second sister. Oh yeah, something that happens whenever you get out of the menu is your character sticks for no reason to the ground. Um, there. No? What? Why didn't my defense go up? There. It, it's fun clicking on items and having them not work. That, that's that's a great sign of programming. Okay, so now we go south. There it is. Okay, there's the last phone booth. Well, not the last phone booth, but the last phone booth on this side of the river. Okay, now I could get a resurrection scroll, but I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to go for the river. And I click on the oldest sister, and I go to her ninja arts. This is why I wanted to get to level five, because that's this is the ninja art of flight. So click on that, ninja power goes down. I press, hold B, press A, and now I can fly. I'm gonna fly in. Look at that. She's almost dead too, though. Okay, I gotta switch out. No one her to die quite yet. There's permadeath in this game, by the way, if your character dies. Like, I didn't get the resurrection scroll, so if your character dies, she dies for the rest of the game. But, oh, guess what? If the main character dies, you can't win the game, but it doesn't tell you that, and the game just keeps going. So you could get to the end of the game and not be able to win. So that's another good, great bit of game design. Okay, last phone booth. There we go. Thanks, sunglasses guy. He's only got 11 hit points left. It's nice that they give you all these endlessly spawning enemies and flying arrows over the place, but no way to heal yourself. Like the actual healing art, you don't get like till way later in the game. Like there's no healing items that pop up anywhere. Like it's just it. There we go, level two. Now you ever play um, Ninja Spirit on the Turbo Graphics? Or I guess it's a little bit like uh, Legend of Kage a bit too on the uh, Nintendo. Um, yeah, that's what this game is. Okay, so I have to click on one of the other sisters to pick up this item. Oh, I landed on a land. Okay, I got it. Okay, fine. We're good. I needed whatever that thing was because that's, you know, you need the things. It's a thing. You need it. Yeah, this is a quality game, huh? Almost there. I just want to get to um, the next sort of game spot thing that you need to get to. Oh. These jumps, I don't know. This does not move like Ninja Spirit. I mean, it superficially looks like it, but it does not play nearly as well as that. You see, it just got stuck for no reason. It gets stuck on the ground. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, that's exactly where the ninja should spawn. Uh, there's a thing I can get, whatever that is, okay. Okay, that's the X thing. So I go to her, I click on that, and I get this guy, and I get that. 
And that's sort of how this game goes. I go to the next X and uh, do the same thing, and then I don't know what. This is as far as I've gotten, basically, is I got into the second X, and, you know, you've now seen as much as this game as I have. It's not great. It's not a good game. It, it could have been. Like, there are elements about it, when you look at it, they are kind of neat, like the whole leveling system and uh, the spells, but it's just the like, hitboxes are terrible. The movement is not great. You get stuck on corners for no reason. The enemies are all the same. It's just not a good game. So let's bounce out of this and uh, we'll wrap this up. Thanks for watching this far. Well, if nothing else, this cartridge is still a lovely thing to look at. Uh, it's been fun to look back at this odd corner of Japanese pulp culture history, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Until next time.